Hey guys, so in the last video we created an API endpoint, but how do we actually access an API endpoint? Now you might be coming here completely new, so we're gonna do how do you a couple of things. How do we actually create a request in Rust? And how do we use like make a request in the context of Rocket? So if we have we're doing it through a route, how do we do that? So to do that, we like I said in the first video, we have to use the request module and use the JSON response. In this video, if you were paying attention, if you were coming for the first one, I'm making a request to GitHub. So if you watch that video on Python Flask where I'm making a Tauri updater server, in the server I'll also be making a request to, to GitHub. And uh, there's a funny thing that actually happened there, which is that you need to set a user agent. So that's gonna be really funny. So let's actually go over it from the top of, in the context of Rocket, rather than just jumping straight into the request. Or maybe I will jump into the request and then we'll talk about it some more. So let's create a function to actually make the request for now. And in the next video, I think I am going to be manipulating JSON. So let's just make the request right now. So how do you how do you make a request? So suppose we have a function that takes in uh, so get latest release basically, and for now let's just make it take a repo, okay? So the repo is a string. So repo so for example it would be my Google Keep desktop project, and we will actually set this as a constant for now because it'll be a bit faster to do. And we won't actually use that constant here, but how do we set the URL? So to set the URL, like I showed you in the previous video, you can use the format macro. So the format macro can take that and then you can just compare it. If it's gonna be of this format, then you're good. So then we actually wanna make the request, right? So let's see here. We don't know what we're gonna respond with yet. Let's just assume for now it'll be a JSON value. And JSON value, if you are completely new here, it's basically the sir JSON JSON value. And let's see here, response equals client URL. So where's this client coming from? Well, if you look at the documentation for, let's see, request, you'll see something that you have to create a client. if you look really quickly, for a single request, you can use get. Note, if you want plan to perform multiple requests, it is best to create a client and reuse it, taking advantage of keep alive connection pooling. So that's why we need to use a client, but we don't wanna create the client in this function because then there's no point to it. That's just the same as using the sh shortcut. And I'm not about to show you how to do something shortcut. I'm gonna show you how to do things perfectly, right? So a thing here, I guess, is client, and we, need, we actually have to import client. So to import client, we'll actually import the library as well as client. So for now, it's just client, but I'll show you how to do it in the context of Rocket after this. So what did we do here? We, we said let response equals client.geturl.send.await, and then we did question mark. Now, question mark is basically going to say Pant, like return an error or continue. So if send is, if send out a wait is a result, then this will panic, or sorry, this will send an error. And, but we're returning only JSON. So of course we can't uh, actually do this. We actually need to, you know, deal with it a bit better. So what we'll do right now is we'll say, okay, it could be a value or it could be a request error for now. I am pretty sure that's how you do it, but it could be different. So let me just confirm it. Oh, here, there we go. So it might be prudent to actually use something like this where you, you know, containerize every type of error so that you can, you know, call these functions and just error handle one of these without creating an error struct. But in my completed code I do a bit differently, but maybe I'll do it here. So first we get the response, and the response might fail too, by the way. 
So that's why I did it like this instead of chaining it. And the next thing we want to do is actually parse that JSON. So since we have that JSON feature, we can actually do this. So let response equal client.getURL.send.await and let GitHub release equals response.json value. So we're just saying, okay, we want an arbitrary JSON. Sometimes you can even get away with deserializing uh, de it to a certain struct as well. So if you have your own struct, which is a which is deserialized and served, then you would do it like this. But if you've ever seen GitHub's API, it's not the response is really too big that you should not be deserializing it. It's a waste of your effort, in my opinion. So you all you have to do is use this instead. And this will also cause an error, possibly. And lastly, we just want to res return with that. So actually, you can get rid of all this and you can just have it like this. But in my future videos, I do a bit more than just return the API. This is just the GitHub API, but there's a bit more to it. Now, we actually want to call this in the context of the Google Keep API. So what we'll do here is I can remove this message, I guess, for now. No, I'm, I'll keep it for now. We'll do it. So what we want to do is do get latest release. And for some reason, we still need to do client. It's not for some reason, by the way. I actually know what the reason is. And we can do let result equal this. And if, if OK, if let result equals this, then we do stuff here, return the JSON. So we just return the JSON over here. So actually, what you all you need to do is do dot or else. So if you're returning a result, you can actually do all or else. And And let's see here, a uh, response dot OK or so I am a bit, I think it's or else I might be wrong, actually. So we'll just do it like this for now, just because it's better to return something than an internal error, right? You don't want your code to panic when in a server environment that just sucks. So we'll do this for now. But what about client? Uh, if we want to reuse client, and by the way, this is all asynchronous. So if we want to use client, and uh, now that I said that, this function has to be asynchronous. And because that's asynchronous, get release has to be dot await. So it's actually dot await. And then this has to be asynchronous, which is fine. But uh, how do we get a client to persist through, through routes? That's actually kind of hard. So now I will introduce you to state. So in Rocket, there's something called state management. They have state management for every type. So you can have one variable max per type. And so we're going to do that here. If you want to have multiple requests, suppose you want to have multiple clients for some reason, then you'd use a struct to do it. But I'll, I'll show you how to do that in a future video, or in two videos from now, where we're going to be using uh, caching. We're going to be doing some caching. So to use state, we have to use manage and we have to set it equal to a client. So we'll first import the state in rocket. So we'll do rocket state. Let's see what this is. Okay. So state over here and now we'll actually dot manage and we want to supply a type of client. So client is something like this. So if you're using state, all you have to do is actually do state and then do, or put the variable in and then claim it to be state and not part of the URL. And then all you do is do something like this. So this is a reference to the state for client. And over here, we just do manage and we want to create a new client. But uh, like I said, I'm not sure if I said it though, GitHub API requires the use of a user agent. So we can't just use client new, we have to build our client. And I set the user agent to request because even in, in Python, it uses requests has a default user agent. So you won't ever encounter some bugs like this, but, and HTTP request should, all, should have a user agent. So we'll just have a user agent as request. It could be even as simple as R. 
So, you know, you could, if you really want to play around, if you're calling your own API, then you'd probably set this to something more valuable. But for now, it's because it's our API and, or sorry, it's GitHub's API. We don't want to draw attention or we don't want to give them more information than they need, I guess. So we'll just say it's a request user agent. They're not going to do much to it or they shouldn't be discriminating based on that anyways. And we're going to do build, but since build fails, we might need to actually error handle that. And the only way to do it is actually unwrap or you could create a function that tries to build a client for a thousand times before it panics. But I think the error is so severe that even if you try it again, something would be wrong. Basically, it only errors if the TLS could not be built for some reason. And the TLS probably can't be built if you're doing some something weird. So if I go over here, I would look at builder and get the client builder. We can see that maybe the TLS is somewhere down there. It's possible that you added some stuff. So maybe you did, let me see, something like this. So it would be one of these TLS functions that would probably cause the build to fail. And that's why you don't really need to worry about this. So if this fails, your entire application is going to fail either way if you can't build or if you can't get a client. So that's why I think it's okay to use unwrap. But I guess if you are really paranoid, you'd create a function that would try to build a client multiple times before passing it into this manage measurement of the state. So that'd probably increase your server startup time, but it's okay because it's better to start the server up than it fail. But, you know, this isn't a video going over the what, like unlikely scenarios, like completely unlikely scenarios. So now that we've got our client here, how do we use it again? And so we'll go over how to use it. So see here, we got the client here, but it's a state. So what ends up happening is that when we call get latest, latest release with this client, the client over here also has to be a state reference. Okay, so let's take a look at if this code can compile because I think I've gone over enough here, which is two things. How do we, okay, so I got a error, which is, oh, okay, or I meant to use or, not or else. And I actually have to do okay for some, wait, what? Oh, okay, sorry, math error. So let's see here. Dot await dot map error, I guess. Let me see what I did in my actual code. Okay, or so. Yeah. Okay, so. We have this result, and then we just want to map the error, I guess. Oh, I bet. So we'll just do something like this, I guess. With these Rust results thing, you really got to read the documentation a lot because this isn't even what I did in my actual code. I converted it to an option first, and then I did it. Return res if, oh, okay, so. Return res if the result is error, otherwise returns the okay value of self. So why did this not work? Oh, I guess it's from here, right? So we actually got to do it. Okay, so I did it correctly. I don't know why I was freaking out. It's a pretty, if you just read the errors, then you know what's going on. So these are just warnings, so it's fine. And 
let's just look at this really quickly. Click this. And we can see that we can parse the JSON just fine. So the GitHub request worked as expected, and you saw me error debugging really quickly, even though I was it was a self-inflicted bug of me not reading the error, which is over here. It's got to return OK. Sometimes I think I have Rust anal Analyzer off right now, which is why I'm making errors. But if you turn it on, your CPU will go up and you'll catch something like that. But anyways, I think that's enough for this video, which just showed you how to make a request in the, and I showed you how to handle some errors. So for here, you just use result and you can handle that error really quickly. And over here, you just say, okay, so if this is a result, then, and if it's an error, then just return this error instead, right? So that's how you can handle the error, but it'll get even complicated in the future videos, which will be for in the next one, which is how do we turn this JSON response into something completely new? How do we return a completely new JSON response in this function? And how do we make sure that we can handle multiple types of errors or something like that? So that'll also be pretty interesting how to, I do it because I'll probably have to do it a bit differently if we want to have a nice time. So anyways, I will see you in that video.